Hi, in this video we're going to talk about genes and take a look at how you go from a gene to a protein. Now, let's first start by talking about the famous experiment by Beetle and Tatum that led to the development of the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. And they conducted this experiment with Neurospora, or bread mold. So basically, Beetle and Tatum, they took this bread mold and they bombarded it with mutagens. So they wanted to mutate these organisms. And then they took their mutants and they put them into a variety of environments. Now, some went into what was called a minimal media, which literally had just the bare necessities needed to survive. So, uh, you know, just a little glucose, maybe some other essential nutrients that the organism can't produce for itself. But again, just the bare minimum. And what they found is that the normal neurospora, those which were not mutated, were able to survive just fine in this minimal media. However, many of the mutants could not survive in this minimal media. So then they took those mutants and they said, well, what are these mutants missing in this middle, minimal media that they need to survive? So they would take those mutants and put them in other medias that contained some amino acids, some essential amino acids. So what they found was that some of these mutants which couldn't survive in the minimal media, once given the, the proper amino acids or amino acid, whatever they needed, then they were capable of surviving. So they came up with the idea that the mutation that these neurospora incurred somehow affected their ability to produce those amino acids for themselves. So a normal neurospora is capable of making any amino acid it needs, but these mutants, these various mutants, lost the ability to produce one or more of those amino acids. And this led them to conclude that the genes that were mutated must be genes that code for enzymes that produce those amino acids. So that they came up with the idea that there was a gene and this gene had been mutated and that gene normally produces an enzyme that would produce a particular amino acid. So mutation in the gene means that this enzyme won't be working, means that the amino acid won't be produced. So they called this idea the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, that each gene provides the code to build a particular enzyme. However, this idea was later revised as the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis because of course, not all the proteins that are created from genes are enzymes. Some of them do other things. Some of them act as signaling molecules. Some of them act as protein channels in the membrane. There are a variety of uses of proteins. So they had to revise this idea as the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis. However, even that is not a correct way to think about at least eukaryotic DNA. Here's the thing. What we're going to see is that each gene in a eukaryote can actually code for multiple polypeptides. And more so than all of that, most of the DNA in organisms, eukaryotes, prokaryotes alike, most of the DNA is what we call, so most DNA is NC DNA or non-coding DNA, meaning DNA that doesn't code for proteins. So most DNA doesn't code for proteins. Only a very small portion of our DNA actually codes for proteins. Now, we'll talk about what the rest of that DNA does, or at least what we know it does in a later video. But for now, let's talk about that DNA that does code for proteins. So we've already talked about the, the 
central dogma of molecular biology. And the central dogma is the process by which a gene is turned into a fully functional protein. And in eukaryotes, this process has four big stages. There's transcription, where the DNA code is read and transcribed into RNA. Now, in eukaryotes, that RNA has to go through RNA processing because the RNA that's produced initially from transcription is not ready to be turned into or to be turned into a protein yet. It has to be processed first. And that RNA that is unprocessed we call HNRNA. There are other names for it, but HNRNA, that stands for heteronuclear RNA. And mRNA, messenger RNA, which again, we're going to talk about in a later video, mRNA is that mature transcript. It is what is ready to uh, make some proteins. So after RNA processing, we will have translation. And this is where ribosomes, with the assistance of tRNA molecules, read the code in the mRNA transcript, which was that code taken from DNA, and they use that code to build proteins. But here's the thing. Most polypeptides, most proteins that come out of a ribosome are not fully functional. They need to undergo post-translational modifications. Now we've talked about folding before. Folding is very important. Getting that polypeptide into the right three-dimensional shape to do its job is essential to protein function. So one of the most common post-translational modifications we're going to see is protein folding. But we also sometimes need to cut the particular polypeptide. Or we might need to chemically modify it by, let's say, adding a carbohydrate here or a lipid there, something like that. There's a variety of things we can do to proteins after translation. And here in this image, you kind of see this whole process mapped out. So here. This is our gene right here. Here's our gene. We go through transcription and RNA processing, and then we have our mRNA transcript that gets translated into this polypeptide, which undergoes post-translational modification to become that nice active protein that we see down here. So let's flip the page.